In this last section of the chapter, we talk about the strengths and lengths of covalent bonds and also introduce you to a new concept called bond enthalpy. So thinking about it, you've had ionic compounds and you know that it is lattice energy that holds the uh, compound together. For a covalent bond, we have something called bond energy and it is symbolized by the letter D. So if you look at the two equations I've written here, we have a molecule of hydrogen. It is broken down into two atoms, and this is an endothermic process. It takes 436 kilojoules. If I look at a molecule of chlorine, it to break it into two chlorine atoms, it only takes 242 kilojoules of energy. So the really important feature on this first slide is the hydrogen bond is stronger than the chlorine bond. And we also say the hydrogen is more stable and it's less reactive than a chlorine molecule. Very, very important. Okay, here's a list of all the average bond enthalpies that you will be using to solve problems in this section. Numbers are always provided. So let's say we have water where we have two different OH bonds. It's going to take 926 kilojoules to break that down into two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen. We will say the average bond energy is 463 kilojoules, dividing it by two. But if the bonds were broken one at a time, we wouldn't see that average number. We would see more energy put in to break that second bond and less energy to break the more energy to break the second bond than there was to break the, third, the first bond. But again, we're not an in-depth course. We're going to be using average values, and that is the table on the previous slide that you will consult. So before we go into a calculation, we want to make some points. The energy that's required to break a bond will increase as the number of bonds increases. We have a single a double and a triple bond, and what you see is the energy is increasing. Also the same holds for nitrogen, single, double, triple. There we see an increase in energy. It is not linear. The point we also wanna make is about the bond length. As the bond's numbers increase, the bond length is going to decrease. Now you do not have to know these numbers, but what you do have to know are the two facts about the bonds. Finally, you're gonna be expected to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction, delta H of reaction, like you did in chapter five, but instead you're going to use these bond energies and you will take the bonds that are broken and subtract from that the bonds that are formed. I have two different examples to show you and I wanna scatter everything out. So here it says ammonia reacts with chlorine to form nitrogen and hydrogen chlorine. What hydrogen chloride, hydrogen chloride, what is the delta H of reaction using the bond energies? To do that, you need to draw out each of the materials. You will be learning how to do this in the next chapter, so it's part of what's on the next exam. And what I did is I drew out every single structure that is involved. I have two nitrogens that are giving me six and H bonds, and I have three chlorines, which are giving me three CCL bonds. These are for our reactants, and these are the bonds that are gonna be broken. What I'm going to be making is nitrogen as a triple bond, and I'm going to be forming six HCl molecules. See that stoichiometry, it comes back to haunt you no matter what chapter we are in. So when I look at this, I have one NN triple bond, and I have six HCl bonds. So what I'm gonna suggest when you're taking your exam is be careful, okay? The delta H for this reaction will be the bonds that are being broken, and that's gonna be 6D times the NH, and you'll add to that 3D for the CLCL. Those are from our reactants. What we also have is our products. We have 1D for an NN triple bond, and we have 6D for an HCl bond and those are our products. 
It is different than Hess's law because we take reactants, bonds broken, minus products, which are bonds formed. So you will have to look up the numbers as you work problems. On an exam, they will be specified for you because we're going to see if you can do this process. I really recommend that you write every single number down. It's very easy to make an error and it's an easy problem. It's just like math. So two, three, four, six plus 726 minus the 941 plus 2586. I come up with a, oh, running out of room, 3072 minus a 3527. And my answer is a negative 455 kilojoules. So it is a delta H of reaction, negative 455 kilojoules. It is an exothermic process. And again, we're trying to give insight and show you how things tie together. Well, the same thing can be done using heats of formation, all right? That's from chapter five. You're gonna be taking a final exam. And on that final exam, you're expected to know all the things that happened in our course. So I wanna make sure I reinforce that as we are in this chapter you would be given the delta eight zeros of formation, minus 46.19. Um, if you're doing homework, you'll see it's a zero in a table. Again, these are elements in their standard state, minus 92.3. So since this is using heats of formation, we're doing Hess's law. And I'm gonna say one times zero, plus six times a minus 92.3, these are my products. I'm going to subtract from that two times minus 46.19 plus three times zero. Again, I'm going to write all my numbers out. Minus 553.8 plus, because it's a negative negative, it'll be a plus 92.38. And that's going to give me a minus 461 kilojoules. This is using delta H0 formation. When we use the Ds, we got a delta H0 reaction of minus 455. Now again, these numbers never turn out to be exactly the same. But let's just say they're in the same ballpark. As you go deeper in science, things are going to be modified. What we're showing is that you can calculate a heat of reaction using a bond energy, or you can use it using the delta H of formation. I really want to show you this problem because often the ones they put on the exam are a little more challenging. And if you see this, I just want you to say, I know how to do it, okay? By the time we're in chapter nine, you will be able to take that formula and draw a structure for ethylene. We only have one bromine molecule and it's going to form an ethane. It's going to form a dibromoethane. So nomenclature of organics is not part of this course, but finding this bond enthalpy, it reaction enthalpies definitely is. So why am I doing this with you? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to count those bonds just like we did last time. We have four CHs. We have one CC. We have one BRBR. What are we forming? Well, we're forming four CHs, two CBRs, and, and one CC. It's really easy to forget these. I don't mean to make light of it, but it can happen. What we want to do to find our delta H of reaction is to take our reactants. But before we get started, what do you see here? Do you see four CHs on one side? Do you see four CHs on the other side? Well, mathematically speaking, I don't need to include them because I would just be crossing out the numbers as I did my maths. So we will have 1D for a C double bond C, 1D for a BRBR, and we will be subtracting from that 2D 
for a CBR and the one I almost forgot, 1D for a CC. Again, we are not in a lecture. You can stop this. You can take a look at this. It's a lot different, but I've had to record this one more than once also because I went into too much detail. So I'm just going to put my numbers in right over here. Remember, I had to look these numbers up just as you would on an exam, they will be provided. But we have our reactants where the bonds are broken, subtracting the products where the bonds are made. I get the number 807 minus uh, 900. And what I have is a delta H of reaction of minus 93 kilojoules. This again is an exothermic reaction. So what I added on here is I said, what does the energy diagram look like for this reaction? And again, insight. It's not so much like you need to memorize all these individual things, but once you work on a product, oh, excuse me, step back and take a look and see. Well, when we drew an energy diagram, there was energy, and we would start by putting in our reactants in chapter five. Now, this is an exothermic reaction. That means that our products are lower than our reactants. And what we learned in chapter five was the difference between these two was the delta H of reaction. What I want to add in here, because that's really what this signifies, and it sets the stage for what we'll be doing in 1220. We have to put energy in. This is an endo process. This is where we are going to break bonds, but it's an exothermic process. So obviously when we are going to be making bonds, it is going to have a negative enthalpy and it is going to be an exothermic process. That's the take home message here. Yes, there's numbers that we crunch, but if we have reactants and we have products, this is the energy diagram. We should have a visual picture of in our mind.